Hello and welcome to this new space. Uh, this is the basement. We are going to be assembling an electric fair motor today. So here I've got, I can fit it all in one frame, an eight foot long, two inch outer diameter, one eighth inch inner walled carbon fiber tube. Um, I've already tested this. It holds more than my weight uh, suspended from both ends with me sitting in the middle and bouncing, no problem. But I need to be able to connect stuff to this. So I have gotten in touch with CNC Madness, which is a company I've used for drone parts and gotten them to make all of the parts that I showed in my previous video. Uh, this is the motor plate, for example, and the motors just came in today, which is why this video is happening today. So that is the T-Motor U13 version two. Uh, that is the 130 kV model and it's going to be spinning a 32 inch prop. It's the only thing I don't have yet, it's the propellers, but I can assemble this tube today. So that attaches there. Then I've got these lovely brackets from McMaster Car. Associated hardware. As soon as I figure out where I dropped it. So, McMaster Car, we need to have a chat. <laughs> they made these brackets to fit a two inch steel pipe, probably for hanging, uh, you know, like sprinklers and stuff from a ceiling. And I don't know if you can see it here, but it even says two inch right there. Um, it collapses a little bit. It can get a touch smaller, but this is nowhere near two inches. It's like two and a quarter inches. I don't even know why we're that far off. I had to 3D print a spacer to go inside of this thing. And you can see how thick that spacer is to choke up the extra distance because this pipe is two inches. So now the inner diameter here is two inches. Anyways, so that slides on there. Mm. And uh, because of the strange discrepancy in McMaster Par parts, despite what their catalog says, those holes don't quite line up it's the right size, but it's on me for not making them big enough. Anyways, uh, that will go there. Carbon fiber plate will sit there. Then metal bracket, and then a uh, nut and washer on top of those to really sandwich it all in there together. And that's a, a lock nut. So I'm gonna have to drill these holes out on pretty much everything that actually mounts to the stick. But after I do that, then we'll be able to start sliding these guys on. I'll, I'll basically have to put one on, slide it all the way to the middle, put the next one on. So each side is going to use Hold on, let me do the math. Two for the center, two for the booms, four. I'm gonna use eight of these guys. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, eight of these. So uh, I'll have to do that and then drill out the hardware. And we're gonna time lapse it because I'm sure everybody is stoked to watch me drill holes. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. So we've got a 3D printed insert, plastic insert from McMaster Car that's supposed to be two inches that wasn't, which is why the 3D insert is required. Uh, metal U bolt, and then a separate part number for this uh, sp steel plate that is made to match the U bolt, uh, three eighths inch washers. I think they're three eighths inch. And then uh, the lock nuts that came with this. So as that tightens down, it'll squish harder on the pipe, keep it from moving. Uh, and then for this piece, the motor mount here, it's four holes that line up with the motor's four millimeter uh, mounting holes, just right like that. So uh, yeah, basically I just have to enlarge the holes on here. I really should have allowed for some machining tolerances. Carbon fiber is hard to drill through. Um, 
but that's that's totally on me the revision when i do get this finished when i do have files available for share uh, it will have larger holes so nobody else has to do this to kind of give it some wiggle room on that because even as you tighten it these actually splay outwards so they spread as you tighten them down uh, real pain in the butt to be honest but we're going to drill holes in all the rest of the hardware i have it's over here i promise it's in this box and uh i'll come back to you for that we'll start trying to slide some stuff together All right, here we are, finished. We got all the carbon fiber re-drilled, insert, U-bolt, adapter, plate, washer's nut. Uh, so we've got mirrored left and right here, the uh, actual hangers, and that will not only be hung by the carbon fiber, but I've also got some courtesy of, oh, where did I go? Courtesy of, glider sports out of uh, Missouri uh, pair of uh, ropes actually these are the swing arm slings that uh, gravity uses on their defiant that I've got uh, waiting for parts on at the moment but this is more than enough to go around here and then this big guy slides on the tube well it does I have to loosen it uh, the idea is I will be able to pass this rope through the hole to get the attachment and that will space it forward to counteract the weight of the motors. If I do it right, I might not be able, I might not need to hang the battery off the rear end to counterbalance like Justine did. Um, also, I have an inside and outside option because I'm not sure which will work best. I'm guessing the inside, but I figured I'd have this shape cut so I had a few other uh, mounting choices. And I can reverse it if I need to mount further forward instead of just barely offset because these two holes are equidistant from the center of the pole. So um, I'm going to slide these guys on with the ropes first because of course they have to be in there to be able to fit through and uh, then I'm actually going to whip out my my harness and see how it sits and see which how, how far apart the lines go. I need to mark the center and all of that. Um, yeah, let me go get my harness. So that was that was the plan. Um, the chest strap is not tight, so it, it could go wider. Uh, more importantly, the pole is behind, so it's pushing on the webbing and the risers. It's not actually going to be pulling on the carbon fiber bits. Um, I didn't want it to to rely on this to keep the pieces in check, and also the the straps that go under your arms here would catch it if one of these very very unlikely uh, failed but seeing that this didn't work uh, I think I'll just take these straps off and loop them in a, a single loop around the hole that'll get me the same forward backward spacing it'll give me a lot more strap uh, slack so we'll do that instead because that's obviously a bit of a bind there looped around I guess the carbon fiber bit just to show you here a lot easier I've got a lot more slack with this setup and I still feel really good about it you know these things hold what 20 something kilonewtons it's crazy 20 yeah 27 kilonewtons which is several thousand pounds but that'll hold it uh, the weight of the motors is really the only thing that's supporting because the push is uh, applied to the riser and the webbing the harness so now I guess we're going to assemble the actual prop guards all right uh, assembling the prop guards are basically in two identical halves one stacked on top of the other which really only means a five millimeter difference for the back doesn't matter uh, using an m5 by 30 screw with a washer on the back coming from the back of the mount here passing through both arms and then I've got this cap piece that will fit over it and actually take the strain 
I'm actually using uh, RC car wheel nuts. These are what I use at the store to hold on some of the larger trucks, uh, wheels and tires. But they happen to be lock nuts with a flanged, serrated uh, back to them, so no need for a no need for a washer, and I get them at a really cheap price. Anyways, that stacks on there. There's another one that goes down here in the bottom to keep it from warping, and uh, we'll tighten those down. All right, arms successfully attached. Um, these little spokes will hold something. Honestly, I don't know what yet. It's it's gonna be some kind of mesh, some kind of screen. I added three holes here so I had something to mount them to. Uh, the larger hole in the bottom, actually, is for a, ooh, it's for a big po uh, pole. I think it's, uh, I think it's half inch. And that is an option if I see it necessary to extend past the edge of the propeller down to the ground so I cannot scrape this on the ground. I will include that if I feel it's necessary. It looks terrible and adds drag and I mean it's carbon fiber so it doesn't add a lot of weight but uh, I know it will break off pretty easily and mess up the rest of this so I'm, I'm still thinking of whether or not to include that but I just wanted to show how I'm attaching these. They've got this little cutout here which is conveniently sized for the nut, I have to push it in. Um, this nut, once it's held like this, will basically let me put a screw in from the other side and suck it down, and it'll hold it flat, and then I'll put a washer on the other side with the screw. So uh, that mount is what I actually had on my very first 3D printer, which was made of plywood. <laughs> and uh, M3 hardware with a similar setup like this. So I figured if it works for something that needed to be relatively exact, I might as well use it here. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna do that, press those in, put these arms on, and be right back. So that was quick, but I uh, just wanted to do one to show you what it looked like. So the, the nut sits on this kind of platform and the screw goes through the through the teeth, the feet, whatever, the pegs that hold it in place and also pulls the whole unit down flush with it. So that's tightened up. It's a lock washer. It won't come off again. And it's actually pretty stable. Keep in mind this just holds a netting or a, a screen so it doesn't actually have to support anything really. It's just there to block, just there to block propeller shards in the sad event that it might happen, but I need a design for it. So that, uh, the two inner ones are larger, so they get two nuts and two screws for each. But we'll uh, continue along that, finish this one, and knock out, ooh, knock out the other one, because it's exactly the same, and this video is already getting really long. Well, pretty proud to say that uh, that fit together fantastic. So let's one completed setup. You can see there the uh, hardware also it's nice and flush. I really like that mounting option and it's I mean it's sturdy. Look at how much deflection there is. You, you're you bowing the, the main piece before you bend anything here at the joint. That's, you know, it's just stiff for something that's just meant to hold back a propeller. So I've got both of those finished. Um, these are mirrored effectively, like so. So that'll go on the pole. I'm going to mount these when I have the propeller, so I actually know how far from the propeller to put these. So I'm not actually going to stick them on the pole right now. But these were these were the big construction projects, so move those out of the way. And finally here, the motors. So that big plate, which honestly is overkill. Thread locker. Very important thread lock. And the bell of the ball. That is a, it's a very nicely built motor. Very, very exact machining, and it's lighter than I expected it to be. 
but that uses M4 hardware, which I have here. We're just going to find out how long of a screw we can put in the back because uh, T motor or Tiger motor is made in China. And honestly, their, their whole website was kind of hard to navigate. So I, at least, at least I didn't see anything that told me how long the screws were going to be. Okay, so that's, that's on. What a strange sound. Um, yeah. That was pretty, pretty painless. That will slide onto the, slide onto the shaft there. And, uh, one other thing I want to show you here. Let me go grab it. From the lovely people at getfpv.com. Who, by the way, decided to discontinue the Lumineer motors I plan on using for this. Come on, guys. We've got... Oh, man. That packaging is stiff. APD. I don't know why they package it like a freaking bulletproof vest. <laughs> what? That's... Is that it? What the heck? So, this is a speed controller for that motor. And honestly, I was expecting something at least as big as the motor itself. But, uh, I shouldn't handle this too much with my hands as dirty as they are. Um, APD makes these things in Australia. And apparently, this is one of the higher performing uh, speed controller brands on the market, as far as I know. Um, this is actually marketed for an X-Class racing quad. But that is a 200 amp, 14S capable speed controller. So that is more, almost double, what the, uh, what the motor can take. That is an impressive piece of kit. Very shiny, lightweight, but like... I, working in RC hobby, I've, I've seen speed controllers. None of them have been that clean, that good looking. So, uh, yeah, smaller than I expected, but I know the brand is a reputable one, well trusted. So that is going to go on the build. Um, obviously the three motor wires like, so I'm going to have to do some research and find out if I just go ahead and solder them on that short or extend them and then make the battery cables to the speed controller shorter. But we'll figure that out when it comes. I just wanted to show you guys that because that is a, it's actually a pretty big chunk of the budget. And it's, uh, gosh, what are these? I think that's almost $200 and I had to get two of those speed controllers. Okay, well, uh, there it is. That's actually not bad. I mean, I can hold this, not about hitting the ceiling, but I can hold this with one finger. Um, I'll go get a scale and get actual weights on it. But suspended where it's suspended, I feel like I could get away without mounting the battery on the other side. Let me just that's uh I don't know if you guys can see that. That's vertically balanced. I do not have to counterweight this with a battery. Oh, that's good. It didn't occur to me that I could just let the pole rotate to wherever wherever flat was and just tie onto it. 
Yeah. So this is good because now I can strap batteries all over me wherever I want. Um, that sounded weird. But the uh, the battery doesn't have to be suspended from the pole because that's vertical or you know close enough to it. It's not tightened all the way down. So if that's hanging from my harness vertically without a battery to counterbalance it, like how Justine did, then I can mount my batteries other places on the harness. Check this out. So the harness I'm using is a APCO First Mark III. It's the name of the harness, the First. It's a uh, recommended First free flight harness. This pocket in the back has webbing to attach to. I could easily fit two of my batteries in here. Um, of course, it would make me lean back further, but it's no big deal. And then, right, so while flying, I've got space to either side where I could feasibly mount two more batteries, um, you know, like slung under these straps, for example. So that's doable, guys. This is really the first time I've, I've got it all all here, all laid out, and I realize it's possible. It's a very interesting feeling. So, that would be the parent part. Well, on the inside of the, on the inside. There is quite a bit of inertia to overcome when you go to turn. That's to be expected, you know, it's all out on the pole, but it's not unmanageable. I feel like I could comfortably run in this just as well as I could have the harness on. Yeah. All right. Well, um... Sorry, I'm just trying to think of what my next move is. I need propellers, and then I need to bring my soldering stuff down here and get the motor wires down to a, a centralized location, but there it is. Oh, let's get some weight. Okay, welcome to the absolute mess from the other side. Um, now we all know how much I weigh. All right, 164. I'm gonna slip the harness on here. Oh man, if this feet is upside down. And uh, basically just hold this, right? Just need to have the weight on me. I'm 85. 20 pounds, you guys. 20 pounds. So, what I'm missing from this are the propellers, which might come up to a pound and the battery which i know is 11 pounds so not 31 pounds i need to mount the speed controllers and have electrical wiring and that is it that's that for that one um i'm impressed i really didn't think it would go together that easily and i did a little over engineering on the brackets that actually hold it on because i didn't realize that balance works the way balance does but now I know. So thanks for watching. If you stick on this far, subscribe because I will have this thing flying probably before my gas one over there. And uh, yeah, we're waiting on propellers. That's basically it. See you guys later.